Trigger warnings for sexual assault, pedophilia, mutilation, gore, misogyny, and feminine slurs, and spoils for Outlast Whistleblower. Let's kick off this series by talking about a fan favorite, Eddie Gluskin, or Gluskin, if you will. I will not. He is the third main antagonist in Outlast Whistleblower. His goal is to find the perfect bride to create the perfect family, which nicknames him the groom. But since Mount Massive Asylum doesn't have any assigned female birth patients or staff, he has to be creative. He butchers and mutilates men, attempting to perform sex changes to get rid of the vulgar bits. So where did Gluskin come from, and why is he so obsessed with the perfect family? From very early on in his childhood, Gluskin was sexually abused by his father and uncle, who took photo evidence. Although a horrifying and mortifying experience, no doubt, it was eventually their downfall. They were incarcerated, but unfortunately the case was made a public platter, telling the entire world what happened to Gluskin, which couldn't have helped him heal. This trauma followed him well into adulthood, where he turned into a serial killer of women. He mutilated and murdered them, one after the other. This is not confirmed nor hinted at by anyone at Red Barrel Studio, but my theory is that he met a girl, fell head over heels immediately, and the moment she did something that wasn't very ladylike, in his opinion, he freaked out and killed her, probably calling her an ungrateful slut in the process. And this was a pattern he likely repeated until getting caught. Back to the facts. He was eventually caught and sent to Mount Massive Asylum for treatment and submitted to the Morphogenic Engine Program. During the therapy, he was a very difficult patient to work with. He constantly lied about his progression, stating that he could hear the Wall Rider just by closing his eyes. Now, if you're not familiar with the game, the Wall Rider is a swarm of nanocells fueled by the pain, trauma, and torment of the patients in the engine. The good folks at Murkoff were looking for the perfect host, someone to reach what they called lateral ascension. Then they planned on controlling it. That did not happen. Back to Gluskin. He constantly lied about his childhood, basing it off a popular sitcom Leave it to Beaver. It's theorized that this was a show he used to escape his abusive household and forget about all the horrible things that were happening to him. When confronted with photographical proof of what happened to him, which is fucked up and not at all okay by the way, he had one of two reactions, delirium and confusion, or violent rage. He also refused to admit that he ever killed anyone, and when confronted with photos of the woman he murdered, he often stated that they were just sleeping. It is my theory that Gluskin doesn't believe himself to be lying. He truly believes he never killed anyone, and doesn't remember doing it. It's common in certain mental illnesses I will not disclose to have large gaps in your memory, and no, I'm not just talking about DID, especially during spouts of rage or otherwise heightened negative emotions. Our experience with Gluskin during the game begins at the very start, when Waylon Park, having freshly sent the whistleblowing email, goes to the morphogenic engine to fix the fMRI. Andrew, Waylon's supervisor, instructs him to fix the screen before Gluskin is put back in his cell. As Waylon is fixing it, Gluskin breaks free from his guards, stark naked, and runs up to the shield separating the IT from the morphogenic engine. He's yelling rape, insisting the guards are going to rape him, which I believe shows he's somewhat in a flashback and looks Waylon dead in the eyes while saying, You can stop this. You have to help me. He's put in his morphogenic chamber, and as he's not a compatible host, he's immediately covered in lesions and scars, his eyes becoming bloodshot. There's another brief moment we see him before he really kicks in. Outside in the drying grounds, Waylon hears the screams and calls for help from a man inside the building. He looks through the windows of the doors, and there's Gluskin, striding towards the voice. He stops for a moment, makes eye contact, and continues. Finally, after being chased by a patient I'm sure we'll go over later, Dennis, he enters Gluskin's territory unknowingly. After trying a locked door, he looks up, and there stands Gluskin, who calls him Darling and goes after him. Waylon has to either run, hide, or die to get away from Gluskin, finding himself jumping down an elevator shaft, fucking up his leg, and jumping out of a second-story window, all in various order. He finds himself in a locker, to which Gluskin comes to him and says, Darling, you can't hide from me. He drags him into his office, where he gives him sleep gas, and Waylon passes out for 12 hours. Intermittently, he witnesses Gluskin mutilating his patients, attempting the sex change only for them to die. He switches between berating them, saying they're ugly and have given up on love, and lovingly asking them to bleed less. Waylon eventually wakes up on the table, where the saw is quickly coming towards his crotch. He's about to be mutilated himself when a random variant comes up, punches Gluskin in the face, and runs away. Gluskin follows after, giving Waylon the chance to break from his bondage, throw on his jumpsuit, and grab the camera. The chase continues until Waylon grabs the key to the admin block, but as he's opening the door, Gluskin finds him, punches him a few times, and drags him into the gymnasium, where Waylon earlier found countless bodies of his patients strung up like skinned rabbits, like wet laundry. Waylon theorizes that whatever Gluskin is telling himself, he's not making women to bear his children. He's making women to kill them. 
Think of that how you will. Gluskin tries to string him up and choke him to death, but in Wayland's struggle, Gluskin gets tangled up and impaled on a spike, leaving him bleeding out and Wayland free. The last time Eddie is seen is in Outlast the Murkoff account, where he's cutting into a patient during Wayland's leaked footage. And that is Eddie Gluskin. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like me to do more, then go ahead and let me know. I'll do whatever Outlast topic you want me to cover. Stay proud, everybody.